Do you love God, your neighbor, yourself? In Matthew chapter 22, the religious leaders confront Jesus. It's a more collectivistic culture. It's more about shame and honor. Some of us in the Western, more individualistic side of the world won't get this as much, but they came in public to dishonor and shame Jesus. They weren't trying to learn anything. That's why you see in the New Testament, the disciples pulling Jesus aside to ask him questions privately. They really wanted to learn, but they were actually trying to show up Jesus and show up each other. There were two different political parties, the Sadducees and Pharisees that believed differently. And so they ask him questions about taxes and marriage and the resurrection and what's the greatest commandment of all 611 of them in the Hebrew scriptures. A few quick takeaways. We're supposed to pay our taxes, be good citizens of our current kingdom, even as we're part of a spiritual kingdom. And there is life after death. It just may not be exactly what we think. And by the way, we are like the angels. We don't become angels. No offense to the film, It's a Wonderful Life. But most importantly, of the 611 laws, the most important, and it can be summarized with this, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. So you can't say you love God and hate people. And you can't really love people without God's help. But we also need to value who we are, who we were created to be. See that we're created in the image of God and see others just like that. And treat others the way we want to be treated and deserve to be treated with dignity and respect. And to love God fully with all of who we are. Well, the religious leaders did not like any of this. In fact, they stopped asking questions. That didn't go so well. Instead, they came up with a more nefarious plan. As Jesus shared, disciple, shared parables about people coming into the kingdom they didn't think deserved to be there.